Today I'll be demonstrating the basics of how to frame a wall. What's going on and welcome to today's video. My name is Colton and today I'll be demonstrating a basic way to frame a wall. Now this wall has a window in it. Pretend like that's not there. And I'm going to show you the basic steps that you can take in order to frame pretty much any wall. I also like to take this approach when framing all my walls, even around windows, because I'm a lot more visual. And so any of the studs that are in the way actually measure around and cut. So my walls go up pretty quick and then I can frame out the window really easy. A few things to keep in mind. I'm doing this work on an unfinished basement in a new build. I got concrete floors and I'm working with eight foot long studs. All the tools that I use within this video will be down below in the description. So go check those out. And the time that it took me to put up this one wall was probably about 20 to 30 minutes. That includes measuring, cutting, nailing, and putting it up and fastening it all down. So let's get started. Here's the wall that I'm going to frame. If you have a layer of insulation and a moisture barrier like I do, check what's behind it so you understand what you're framing. Be aware of water, gas, vent, or waste lines and knowing where you need to frame around those and give enough room for those lines to be accessible while still having straight square walls. So here's what I got. For demonstration purposes, pretend like this window's not here. The only thing in this wall is this main water line, so I'll need to make sure that I build out my wall far enough out, but I'll also need to build a box around this main water line so I can still access it. And this is also the ideal situation. I have floor joists above, and the wall that I'm going to frame out is going to go perpendicular to this wall. So securing this is going to be really easy. But oftentimes new builds don't always have a piece of wood right here on these ends. So you would need to find a way to install a piece of wood here. So as you continue to frame your wall, the top plate can secure to something. So let's start measuring. Pull back this insulation if you have it and just measure out five and a half inches from the cement wall. The reason why I say five and a half is your typical two by four is actually not four inches wide. It's three and a half inches wide. So when you place your framed wall, this mark will show you how far you need to go until you need to stop. And this still allows two inches for this moisture barrier and insulation to do its job. I made a second mark somewhere down the wall, grabbed my laser level, lined up those marks. Now you can trace that line with a pencil or grab a chalk line and snap it. And now you have your guide. While your laser level is out, I'd also highly recommend marking on the floor joists where your top plate will go. So you have a surefire way of a straight wall. Now measure out how much wood you need. So I used a two by four by eight feet long pressure treated stud for the bottom plate and then a normal stud for the top plate. Make sure when you're framing directly on concrete that you use a pressure treated stud for the bottom plate because this acts as a moisture barrier. And here's a pro tip while framing. Put your top plate and bottom plate together, stand it up on its side, and put the measuring tape down, and you're going to make a mark where your first stud's going to go. Your first stud's obviously going to go on the edge, and if you're measuring from left to right, every 16 inches, mark on the right side of the line, and then transfer these lines to the other stud. You're essentially measuring once, and marking two pieces of wood, and shortening your measuring time. And another tip, on your measuring tape, you'll notice every 16 inches is highlighted with a little bit of red. That's for framing. Now you need to measure out your vertical pieces. You can measure from your floor to the floor above and minus three inches because the two by four is actually only a one and a half by three and a half so one and a half times two is three or if you don't trust your math skills lay down your two pieces of studs on the floor and then measure up from that once you have that measurement go to your stud measure it out draw a line cut it and repeat this with all the other vertical pieces you don't have to measure out every vertical piece that you need i would just do occasional checks to ensure that your floor and the floor above you is level now take your top plate away from your bottom plate and try to keep the marks aligned then take all of your vertical pieces and lay them out try to roughly put where these studs will go on these plates based on the marks you made earlier and then start nailing i like to put four nails for every stud two in the top and two in the bottom. I also like to make sure that my studs are pretty straight. If you have a stud that's twisted, you can drive one nail and then twist the stud a little bit and then drive the second. Once you have everything framed out, pick it up and position it against your wall. Now normally I like to put my top plate in first and then get the bottom in. Tap it with a hammer if I need to, but in this example, I did the bottom and then the top. You want to make sure that your plates are aligned with those marks that you made earlier. If you have a little bit of clearance from your top plate to the floor joist, line up your top plate with that line as close as you can. Drive one nail first into the floor joist and then move down your wall while making sure everything's lined up and then continue nailing. Also be aware of where you're nailing. If there's a water line or a gas line, don't hit it. Once all that's secure, move to the bottom, make sure it's aligned. I grabbed my ram set tool and secured it. I like to drive three concrete nails, one in the middle and then on the ends. And now you're done. 
Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you liked what you just watched, go ahead and hit this button to subscribe so you don't miss out on future project and how-to videos that I have coming up. And be sure to click this link so you go check out previous how-to videos that I've completed in the past. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.